So, you're starting a new army. It might be your first, it might be your second. But like all of us, you'll have moved from zero to a huge mound of plastic in no time. We set ourselves a target. Can you paint a Warhammer 40,000 army in 12 hours? Let's find out. For our new army, we're using the contents of the Cadia Stand box set, and we're painting them up in the classic city fight color scheme of the Cadian 122nd Regiment, as voted by our wonderful Patreon supporters. We have our army box set, it's time to crack it open and get building. So I flip through the instruction manual and I'm picking the sergeant, a nice and straightforward mini to demonstrate on. It's just a matter of following those build steps and working your way through. Again, when we're clipping out here, I'm gonna use the flat side of the clippers when slipping out. Be mindful when cutting that last part because sometimes they have a tendency to fly off. Clean up the parts with a knife or a mold line remover once you clip them off. Personally, I prefer to get everything cut out in one go, place them on the manual and then just clean them up and then just build them as the instructions say. It just helps speed the process up. Now I've built a few models in sub-assemblies. This is the gun crew who I've put on separate bases so I can paint them easier and not have to work around a big cannon. Again, I'm making sure I use super glue for this stage because it'll be easier to snap them off later. So I've our now built, it's now time to undercoat and then paint them. Now, as I'm painting these with an urban camo scheme, I'm gonna be using Army Paint of Wolf Grey, which pretty much matches up with Rust Grey, if you're interested. Now, I always focus on the majority of colour schemes over these, mainly fatigues and trousers and stuff, which is why I'm going with grey, but there's some things that might vary in the army. So with the Sentinel and the actual Ordnance big guns, I'm going to be spraying those silver. So we braved the UK cold of minus three, and the wolf grey spray failed on us. I'd say it drizzled, spurted, didn't really spray. So we had to quickly make some changes, so I had to run inside grab some Chaos Black, undercoat all my troops with Chaos Black, and then get some Lead Belcher on the, the Sentinel on those weapons. So, yeah, uh, we're undercoated black. I'm trying something here, as opposed to airbrushing or having the Wolf Grey undercoat, which didn't work, as we've already discussed. I'm gonna have a crack at just seeing if I can just overbrush some Wolf Grey over these guys. I know it's got a bit of green on this brush, but that's fine, because it's just stained. So all I'm gonna do, let's just get myself a dry brush. And then just overbrush that cloth and see how that looks. I just need a couple of coats. What I originally would have done was just sprayed it with grey. Would have been super easy. But not to be. Because our grey spray failed, I'm gonna need to block out that grey the old-fashioned way with a brush. Very big brush. And a couple of coats of that. It's unfortunate for the timing, but the end results will be the same. I'm not going for neatness here, it's messy, but it's quick. Now that that's done. I'm an hour behind schedule. It's time to move on to the rest of the miniature. Our first step is to pick out all the black sections using black leisure. This will be the armor, the weapons, and the leather details like the boots and gloves. You could paint your leather brown, but as we're going for speed, we're going with black, but we'll show you a cool trick to differentiate the two materials later on. So it took me 45 minutes to overbrush all that gray. So I'm 45 minutes behind. I'm now blacking out, which is going to take about an hour. So see how we go on. So we opted to paint the gloves or the hands black. So just all our leather gloves to cut down on time because that's what we're going for rear speed. And then this absolute chancer turned up with his sleeves rolled up. We called him Stephen, or should we say Sneven. And it wasn't one, it wasn't two. Found out there's four of them. Four, that's going to knock us back. The whole point of it was just to, you know, speed but no no sleeving turns up in his mates and now we're behind didn't get the memo did they how odd is that next it was to pick out any silver details using iron hand steel most of this is going to be weapons like the las gun or things like grenades etc and then it felt like an entire lifetime painting the silver on this absolute muppet i mean literally every other model in the set has options every single one of them does except this guy no he has to have all the aerials in the world. Why? Why? There's so much, there's why? I hate him. I hate him so much I flicked him hard across the table. Hate him. Can go away, Master Vox. <laughs> Don't get me started on that guy. Triggered me all the way through this video. We're trying to save time here, Pat. We're trying to save time. This guy turns up with all the gear. 
Next up is to pick out any gold details using Retributor armor. This is mainly Imperial Eagles scattered across the minis as well as some belt buckles and a little bit of trim on those sergeants and officers shoulder pads. Our next color is to use Mephiston Red and this is for the left shoulder pole again tying it in with that lovely city fight art. However for different squads or platoons you can always use a different color so tie it up to you. So at this point we've blocked in a whole bunch of colors next up is to pick out that camo scheme for our 120 second. Now I could just not do it and highlight the models but it really just adds a nice level of interest and it looks cool and it actually looks like you spend more time on your models than you actually have. It's going to take us an hour but it's worth it for that impact. The first part of the camo pattern is to use Black Legion for the design and we're looking at painting the letter Y horizontally or slightly horizontally. Now if you're not feeling that confident then a regular bobs will also do the trick and should you make any mistakes use the Army Painter Wolf Grey to just you know fix any mishaps. Take your time and as I found when I was doing it I actually got quite a good rhythm going. The second part of the camo, we'll be using Pro Acryl's Bolt Titanium White. Again, we are painting the letter Y horizontally. And again, if you make any mistakes, use Wolf Grey or Rust Grey, whichever you've got. With the camo now done, what we're now going to do is drench that entire model in Norn Oil. Because I know a few of you out there really like it. I do that. They drown it. They drown those models in Norn Oil. As always with shades, be mindful of it heavily pulling in those recesses. I did need Pat to remind me a few times, but that's fine. If it does, dry off a brush and then use it to soak up any excess. Honestly though, after it dried and there was some pulling, it wasn't that massively noticeable because, well, the camo pattern kind of hid it. Applied the wash yesterday, left overnight to dry. We've got about two hours, 20 minutes left. So the skin to do, I've still got all the weapons and the stem cell to do as well. It's fine. We can do this. Most of the models are built. It's just like a bit of skin. I'm not stressed. You're built and you're stressed. It'll be fine. Now we're going to add some distinction between the armor and the leather details. And for this, we're going to chip the armor up using iron hand steel. And if you find any of your chips are too big or clunky looking, just get some black agent and then just tidy back up with it. It's now time to pick out the skin tones. Again, any flesh tone will do, but I'm going to mix it up a little bit with three tones across the army set. Rakar Flesh for the lighter skin tone, Blood Reaver for the mid tone, and then Catachan Flesh for any darker tones. I'll also pick out any of the details like Rakar Flesh on the Medic, and Parchment on the Banner, and of course we mustn't forget our four guardsmen didn't get the memo about rolling the sleeve down. Sleeve and strikes again! Now what I'm going to do is coat over the Rakar Flesh and Blood Reaper Flesh Tones with Gullman Flesh. And then I'll use Norn Oil for the darker skin tone. And at this point, you can also drench that over those bits we did, such as the Banner and the Medic. Oh, and of course, don't forget the paper on the blooming Master Vox's unnecessarily large Xerox machines he's carried around. Now to speed up the proceedings, I'm going to apply my first base and texture onto my infantry before moving on to painting the ordnance and sentinels. Again, it's just to speed up. I'm going for a war-torn city rubble vibe and for that I'm going to use a dusty grey base and for this I'm going to be using AK's Lunar Desert and I'm going to apply it quite heavily to the base. Not only is it great texture paint but it's also great value for money. We worked out that it costs about 6p per mil uh, as opposed to Astro Granite which is about 11p per mil which is mad. Uh, it's a huge tub, it goes miles and I don't think we've even used a quarter of it. I'll also thin some down when I'm splodging it around near the feet. Again, it just speeds up the process. They can add some thicker after. Now, Astro Granite is a decent alternative to this, especially if you've already got it. But honestly, after using AK's basic materials, we recommend that. It just, there's so much of it. It goes far and it's great. And it just, it looks better. It does. We're just having a Christmas biscuit to console myself because we've hit the 12 hour mark. I've got all the troops done. Based, well, kind of the waiting to dry. Not done, not not done the sentinel. And these guys need doing, and those guys need clearing up. But nearly there, nearly there. I reckon another two hours, fourteen hours, fifteen hours. Lifetime of a guardsman. Mm. 
Honestly though, I mean, with the time and some of the issues we had, sort of the spray, we've done okay. Could have been worse. Could have been Pat. Could have been raining. Could have been raining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now we're going to move on to our war machines or weaponry and our Sentinel. Now the Sentinel dried a bit weird after we sprayed it because it had gone, I don't know if it was something to have outside or what. But you know what, it's fine because we're going to coat the whole lot in Norn oil, really drench them in Norn oil, and then when they're dried, I'm then going to do a little bit of dry brushing of iron hand steel. So once that Norn oil's dry, get some iron hand steel, wipe it off as much as you can, and then just gently flick over those edges, giving it a nice subtle highlight. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to paint all the armor panels on these vehicles and weapons using wolf grey, which is the pot of paint, not the spray. So we've got the pot of paint ready. I'm going to do a couple of coats here. What you're not going to do, which is all about speed here, is don't go to the edges. It does two things, saves your highlighting. Secondly, looks war torn, weathered, battered, been out, obviously doing its stuff on the battlefield for ages. And this is Imperial Guard, fine, great. You can use it for orcs, you can use it for anything, you can use it for space marines, it just gives it a really nice weathered, battered effect. And it's great and speedy. And I've used it a lot for scenery as well, so it's worth taking up on scenery. After picking those other panels, we're now going to get some Black Legion and then just pick out the gun casing and of course the wheels on those ordnance weaponry. Then it's a case of picking out little minor details here, so retributor armour for any eagles. And then Mephiston Red for any red markings, so just on the knee there of the Sentinel. Also when using Mephiston Red for the little monitor or terminal they've got, I'm just going to use that thin down pick out that screen, also any lenses at the front, and then for any buttons, I'm just going to use it straight from the pot. And again, all those details we picked out, we're just going to drench those with Norn Oil. So again, that's the Wolf Grey, Black Legion, Retributor Armour, and the Mephiston Red. Right, vehicles, weaponry, done. What we're now going to do is clip off those models from the bases, because they're all there just so we can hold them and paint them. Again, because they're super glued, quite easy to snap off. There might be one or two where you need to use clippers and dig into them a little bit. For the most part, they're just going to pop off and then just clean them underneath with a knife if there are bits of glue on the, the bums or on the feet. And then once they're all glued onto the war machines or the ordnance weapons, we're then going to start basing them in that texture and leave that to dry and then move on to applying some liquid pigment. Um. So we are 13 and a half hours in now. So that's an hour and a half over where I want it to be, but that's fine. Everything's based, just waiting for some of the bigger things to dry off. Uh, then I'm going to add some liquid pigments to those. But I thought, you know what? Probably an extra hour's worth of work after that. I'm just going to tart up a few things, tidy the flesh up, put some transfers on, put some words on the banner, leave it at that. I'll be happy with that. I said, yeah. Yeah, we're over, but he's counted. You're not counted, I'm not counted. Mmm. Christmas. Roast. These are like enamel based, so you'll need thinners to thin them. We've got some thinners here. Apparently, it's got a nice fruity fragrance smell. Interesting. And all I'm going to do is apply that over the texture. And then if I need to, in some place where it's a bit too thick and goopy or too much, I'll just use the thinners just to thin it down. Once applied, it will dry matte and is self-fixing, so you won't need to seal it or anything. Alternatively, you can get some like Xandri dust or Steel Legion drab and really thin it down and apply that over your Astro Granite if you don't want to use this. To finish off, I'm going to use Steel Legion drab as I always do to paint the rim. Honestly, you can use any colour. I just love this and I think it's a nice visual bridge between the base and the gaming board. So all our models are based. They're done. We're 14 hours in. However, being me and finicky, I want to add some extra details and I'm going to give myself an extra hour. And the reason for doing that is we all know the life expectancy of a guardsman is 15 hours. So hopefully they'll have at least a minute to fight before I finish painting. We'll find out. I keep doing myself deadlines and missing them. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to highlight the skin using the base coats we applied, such as Rakar flesh for the pale tones, Blood Reaver flesh for the mid tones, and Katachan flesh for the dark tones. You can always mix in other colors if you want them lighter, but I just want to add a bit more punch to that skin. And for the Rakar flesh one of the well, I just added a little bit more thin Gunnerman flesh after because some of those highlights can be quite stark. Skin's done, you can leave it at this, but I really want some numbers on those shoulder pads, so we're just going to add some transfers to our models now. I'm going to do it really quick. We're going to be using some hard coat and some varnish and a knife. Not too mad. So, 
Let's see how we get on. So first of all, I'm gonna prep that area where I want my transfer to go. And for this, I'm using hard coat or any gloss will do. If it's on like things like the Sentinel, you wanna do the whole panel as well, because it could look different when towing if you just pick out little areas. So do the whole section, otherwise it becomes very noticeable. Then it's about cutting out that decal. So depending on which ones you want, just cut to the shape, apply that decal to a piece of damp tissue, leave for around about 30 seconds, lift off, and then apply to the desired area. You could use tweezers, I'm just using my brush here to pick it off. Once they're on, just dab it with a bit of tissue, and then all we're gonna do is get some matte varnish and apply that over. Again, any matte varnish will do. I'm just using matte varnish plus here. Um, you could use thin down PVA or whatever, it's entirely up to you. Uh, it will dry matte and it just helps seal it in as well. And I think they look mega. There we are, the army is done. Our aim was to paint our army in 12 hours. A 40k army in 12 hours, can it be done? No. I said 15. Can it be done? No. Because I went over by 15 minutes. 15 minutes over 15 hours. So 15 hours, 15 minutes. Life expectancy. I was basically adding decals to corpses is what I was doing there. Now, I would say it's really, really handy to give yourself deadlines. Yes, I was probably a bit ambitious with the 12 took me about 15 just over 15 that's fine if i'd have said to myself can i paint this box set in 24 hours i probably would have picked weird details i would have took the foot off the gas i might have even end up with the same level of content because i didn't stretch myself i didn't push myself but actually it took me 15 hours not 18 or 24 so it is worth giving yourself stringent deadlines or really challenging deadlines it'd be surprising what you can do in that time well, after that roller coaster, I hope you found watching this video is giving you some insights of army painting, also things you can learn from it, things you tried, maybe you've not even thought about before. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found some useful stuff in it. Also, a big thank you to our patrons as well for all the support. And also, if you're watching this for the first time, why not join us on Patreon? Loads of benefits and it helps support us as well. Don't forget to check out those affiliate links. Again, another way of supporting the channel. Until the next time, stay sharp.